Hello and welcome to Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Today I've, I have a finished object from Holiday Knitting, which is very exciting. I just finished it like half an hour ago. Um, and I'm going to talk about some of the things I'm going to do next, kind of after Holiday Knitting. Um, you know, getting back into kind of the swing of things for next year with my sock designs and that kind of thing. So, and then I have more spinning, of course, to show. Um, as always. So my FO. It's so hard. It's done. I just finished it. Uh, my goal was to finish it this weekend and it is currently Sunday and I finished it. So hmm, I'm so happy. I think it's gonna fit in. It's I tried it on and it doesn't like I don't I don't think it's like massive massive. I think it's gonna be long enough, if not even too long. It's way too long for me, but Ian's seven to nine inches taller than me. Um, so I think he should be fine. And I don't think it's too wide, but I don't think it's too narrow. So that's good. So I've grabbed at the underarms, but I haven't woven any of the rest of the ends because, um, well, I'm trying to fold this and it's just so much. But um, yeah, I'm gonna do that later. And I need to block it. Cause I leave for Vermont one week from today and it needs to be dry by then. So it's all done. So this to me feels like, you know, I feel like just, you know, I had a lot of things that I had to do for Christmas knitting and I knew this wasn't going to take long, but it does feel daunting to have to knit a sweater, not have to knit a sweater. You don't have to knit anybody, anything. Um, but it feels pretty daunting to knit a sweater. Um, even a big Aran white sweater that I know I can do in like a week, no problem. So I'm really pleased that it's done <laughs> um, because it just feels like the rest of the Christmas knitting feels a lot less crazy. Um, you know, so, so that's good. Just less crazy for the rest of the stuff. So, um, yeah, that is huge. And I am so happy. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm not even wearing knitwear today. I mean, uh, yeah, I, I was wearing a, like a cowl, but I went to sub at this church in Mount Vernon today. Um, and it's Advent 3, so I had to wear pink because on the third Sunday of Advent, we wear pink. Well, I do, because that's the pink, you light the pink candle. Some people light the pink candle on the fourth Sunday. I don't know why. Um, I grew up always lighting the pink candle for Mary on the third Sunday of Advent. It's also Gaudete Sunday, that's what it's called. Um, and there's this like antiphon, I should know what it is. There's some kind of like church music thing. Um, no, it must be a motet. I don't know. It must be some kind of anthem uh, called Gaudete and Gaudete Christus es Natus, which means rejoice. Christ was born. Christ is born. Um, and there's this ridiculous dub of the King singers singing it, but like it sounds like they're little chipmunks. And I'm going to put it in the, in the description box because it's so funny. And my friend Addie always from church always shares it on this Sunday. She was in my um, church choir in... Uh, Philly and she shares it on Facebook every single year on this Sunday and it is so funny. So um, I'm gonna put that in the description box because I need to watch it today. Um, anyway, <clears throat> pink, pink, I wear pink, I always wear pink on, on the third Sunday of Advent, Gaudete Sunday or when I was growing up we just called it Mary Sunday. Um, so that's, uh, yeah, I couldn't find anything pink this morning and I was really mad. So it's like, I know I have a pink sweater. I just couldn't, I don't know. I just couldn't get my act together to find it. Cause if you are a church musician, which probably most people here are not, um, you know that sometimes you have to get to church pretty early on Sunday mornings. And here mass is at 10 at almost every church. So I had to be there at nine o'clock, which isn't too bad. Um, when I was a kid, I'd be at church at eight on Sunday mornings when I was, until I was in college, it was eight or eight fifteen or something. Um, really early. So nine's not bad. When I was in college, we didn't have to be there till 1030 for an 11 o'clock service. And then it, in Philly was 945 for the 11 o'clock service. So nine's early, but I have a car now and I didn't, I was like not going to drive. I was going to walk because it's like a half an hour walk up the hill. Good exercise. But it was raining. And also I usually get up really early, like 536. But this morning I put my alarm for seven because I just felt like I should put my alarm for seven and I slept. I didn't sleep till seven, but I didn't want to get out of bed until seven. So I had to 
and then I had some knitting to do. Or actually I was spinning. I usually spin in the mornings when it's really quiet in the living room. Um, and then I had to go to church, so I'm not wearing knitwear. Because you don't want to wear knitwear under your cassock. That's just, it's you're going to sweat under there. So you want to layer up on Sundays if you are if you are singing with full vestments. Um, but they actually found a cassock that fit me first try, which was shocking, uh, really exciting. So that was fun. A cassock is the, the long one that goes under the white thing and the cassock can either be black or purple or red or blue or those are the only ones I've ever seen. Maybe there's other ones, but always, um, yeah, it's like the, the one that goes underneath that long sleeves all the way to the ground and then the white one that goes on top we call it surplus not surplus but surplus s-u-r-p-l-i-c-e surplus and that goes on top and when you're a kid you have to earn your surplus you have to go just in your cassock until you earn your surplus which is very exciting when you get that um so as always i'm going off on tangent already um but yeah now i'm just picking out vm from this sweater okay she's done I feel better about the other things. Like I'm, I'm really close on that Shetland cowl. I just have two more repeats. I haven't really worked on it in a, like a week, but um, maybe I did one this week. I have two more repeats left, so I must have done one this week. Um, and then uh, the scarf I've been working on periodically throughout um, uh, the week and last month, basically, and it's almost done. So. That's my social knitting. And then uh, socks, yeah, socks. Always working on socks. So speaking of socks, that's one of the things I'm gonna talk about today. And I'm actually I'm gonna reach way over here because there's a ton of stuff on this table, all for recording, of course. So um, I'm still working on my Jane Austen socks because they haven't been released yet and they're getting released next year on the 15th-ish of every month. I'm gonna release socks. So they're almost done. <laughs> I have two left, like two designs that I haven't knitted that are that are left. And one of them, I have it up here. It's in my head. I know what it's going to look like. The other one, I have an idea of what it's going to look like, but it doesn't, you know, it. Creative work is not something I like to do like, you know, after I come home from the office, but it's something that like on weekends, I don't really have a problem doing like, okay, this is a creative challenge. Let's sit here and decide on a lace pattern. And it's not very hard. So at some point when it comes time, I will decide on the lace pattern that I will put on the last pair of socks. But so the last pair is going to be, well, this last one of the last two pairs, this one which I did dye myself. There is a tag on it actually, cause I had initially planned to take these and sell them at the, at the store in Vermont, but then I decided to keep them because I wanted them. So um, it's called Spruce Forest. That's what I called this. So this is a tonal green, obviously. Um, these are gonna be the Lady Catherine de Bourgh socks because one of my friends said, it was like a whole year ago when we were talking about, I was like, I'm doing this Jane Austen sock challenge and she loves Jane Austen and she was like, you have to do Lady Catherine de Bourgh. And I was like, oh, I definitely do. I have to do her. And then I was like, what color is she? And she goes, crushed velvet green, like a sofa from the 1980s. And I was like, yes, I have a color just perfect for that. So, oh, I do have a pattern picked out. I lied. Oh yeah, it's really complicated. So the idea is like for the Jane Austen socks is like every pair of socks um, is like what the, what the character would knit themselves. Like that's what they would knit. Um, so except for Lady Catherine de Bourgh, because you know Lady Catherine de Bourgh has never knitted before and she's like terrible at it, but she's like one of those people who like, sorry if you have no idea what I'm talking about. She's a character in Pride and Prejudice who has a ton of money, but she's constantly like telling people off for like not being good enough at stuff. Like Lizzie, she was always telling Lizzie Bennett like, oh, you'd be so much better at piano forte if you practiced. And you can come practice here whenever you want because I have such a nice piano. And then she's like, I would have been so good at the piano forte if anyone had ever taught me. Like, it's just like she would say that about knitting too. She would have like really beautiful socks and then she'd be like, I would have been able to knit these myself if anyone had ever taught me. Like, I would have been so good at this. But, you know, she's not because she doesn't do it. So that's the 
that's the Lady Catherine de Bourgh joke. But they're, this is going to be another all over lace. So, um, so like, uh, kind of like the Jane ones. I think I'm going to bookend my year with, with all over lace, which is complex. Lace is, all over lace is not for everyone. So that's why I have such a variety. I have all over lace, lace, small lace panels down on the sides. I have texture. I have the lace panels that go down the front. I have like a less complicated one. I'm, two that are not as complicated actually. And then the third one is quite complicated. The ones I just finished, which the Eleanor Dashwood socks, those are the most complicated of the panel that goes all the way down the front. And yeah, that's it. I don't have any cabled ones. Um, so this is gonna be like this one. And then I have the Marianne Dashwood ones, which I haven't done. Those are gonna be like a really light purple, like a really, really light lavender. Um, Cause you know, Marianne's emotions are just always depleted. Like she doesn't have any color left in her. She's so melodramatic. Um, and they're gonna be um, textured with diamonds, like King Charles brocade. So that's fun. Lizzie Bennett's socks were King Charles lace, and these are King Charles brocade, which is funny, because now we have a king named Charles, um, although I don't really recognize him as a king. Sorry. No, I do. I just, I feel I'm I'm still sad. Like, I am Canadian, so technically, yeah, I, I have to, like, you know, that's the monarchy. I don't have to recognize them, but... I really liked Queen Elizabeth. I just thought it was nice to have a matriarch. And I think Charles is kind of, you know, I've watched The Crown. I know what Charles is about. So, yeah, I don't know how I feel about that. But I guess it's somewhat poetic. But now there's a King Charles. Charles I was terrible. He was the worst one. But Charles II was okay, so... Yeah. Okay. But after that, those two, then I get to start knitting more samples. So I have a whole schedule now. I finally made myself a schedule for like knitting the rest of the samples and then the sock release and like when I'm sending it to test knitters and all that stuff. So that's next. And then, um, those two are next and then work. And I have two more February samples to knit. So this is the first one. This is going to be an X more, X more sock from John Urban. My Kitty Bennett socks. This is my second pair. This really nice dark pink. Yeah, so these come in 50 gram skeins. The other one is in a ball already. I balled that up when I was in England thinking I would cast on a sock. Haha, <laughs> that was eight months ago. Nine months ago now. I didn't, I didn't do that. I bought a different skein and then I made that into socks. Because I wanted to progress and not go back because I, you know whatever. But anyway, this is going to be Kitty Bennett has a lace panel that goes down one side of each, like the outer edges of each leg. I have another Kitty Bennett colorway that is actually dyed to be Kitty Bennett. Like it's a, it's from at Haynes House Yarn and it's the Kitty Bennett colorway and it's green. So that's fun. Kitty socks that I made so far have been pink and green. So pink and green are clearly Kitty's colors. Um, so that'll be fun. Yeah, I love Exmoor sock. It's really wooly. And I haven't knitted like wooly socks in a while. So probably do this. I'm going to knit some with Drover. Can't wait. I love that Drover yarn. I'm really excited to use it. Um, from the Daughter of a Shepherd, which I caught in my wooly thistle box. Sock box, sock bag. Um, a couple of other sock yarns that I am really excited about using that are commercial. is So this one is from Tempting You Yarns, which is actually just the... Um, the label of the yarn store in Catonsville, uh, Maryland, which is called Clover Hill Yarn. And this is called You So Perfect Sock, so it's the 7525 base, and this color is called Sand Swept. So I think I'm going to do one of my texture patterns in this yarn. I'm not sure if I'm going to do like Catherine Moreland or, which is my March socks, might do the Mrs. Bennett socks in this color, those are texture. And Elliot's also texture. I love the idea of doing these in the seersucker pattern too. These would look good in most of the patterns. <laughs> Maybe I'll do two pairs, two shorter pairs of each. Yeah, I'm really excited about this. So that'll be fun. Yeah. Very excited um, to see what this becomes. You can get these online. I will link it in the show notes. Catonsville's uh, Cloverhill Yarn Store with Tempting You Yarns. 
I will link it. And then this one I'm also really excited about. This is also 7525 base. And I also got this one in England. It is from Peak District Yarns in, is it in Tideswell? When I visited my oldest friend, Sachi, in um, Taddington in March, um, she was living um, a walking distance from, from, uh, from Tideswell. We walked there and we had a very good time. And it was several miles away, but you know, we didn't have a car, so we just walked there. It was really fun. And um, yeah, the colorway is mouthwash, <laughs> which I love. And uh, that's why I got this. I just like could not. I just got so obsessed with this color, and I was like, I have to get that. So it's tonal, it's very nice. I haven't decided which socks I'm gonna knit in this. There it is, mouthwash. It does look like Listerine, but yeah, I would really like to knit socks with this coming up. Also a 7525 base. Yeah. So both these are 7525, which means they have a little bit higher yardage than the 8020 base like this would have. So yeah. Okay, so super fun. What else? What else we got? Um, one thing I would like to do is to make more of these Shetland hats. So this is my my latest and greatest. Uh, I don't know if I've shown this one finished. I showed it in progress for sure. This is um, one that I made. I talked to one of my friends. She is a illustrator and I was like, hey, can you just like help me with some random color combos? I like just text her out of the blue and I was like, please help me here. And she was like, these ones and these ones and these ones. And like, I was like, no, more colors at once. Like I need like five colors. And she would send me these random combos and I made a couple of combos up <clears throat> from these because I just needed some inspiration. This is quite a lot. The dark green is very dark, but um, I like how it goes with the orange and the blue and the purple and all the heathering and love that star crown. This is just a pattern that I made up using Fair Isle chart books. Um, I used a lozenge pattern from a chart book and then an X from a chart book. It is a 32 stitch repeat um, with the night, I think it's 19 rows tall. Little Peary's here, also from Fair Isle Chart Book. And then this is the star from DeCrafter's Cap, Private Wilma Malcolmson, which is what I always use because it looks so good. And it's so cool. <clears throat> so, let's see if I can put this on. I have my hair up. Oh, I did cut them. I did, I have my hair up, but I guess I could just show it down. Now the hat's gonna smell like incense because my hair smells like incense now since I went to church. It was an incense heavy church. So yeah, looks pretty good, feels nice. I made it for Jordan, um, cause she really liked the color combination. So she hasn't really worn it though. I haven't taken it off the head. Um, so she'll have it, it'll be Christmas, Christmas present. Cause she's away in Las Vegas this week or she's leaving today for work. And then she's going to LA, which sounds super cool and amazing, exciting. And um, she will be back the day before I leave. So that'll be fun. We'll still get to see each other briefly. Quick hug, probably masked because I'm trying not to spend time with large groups of people unmasked. I have one birthday party this week that I'm going to and that's the last like event I'm going to with a bunch of people. And I was like, I will come to your birthday party and I will wear a mask. And they were like, I don't care. <laughs> so. That'll be good, get to do that. Um, and then it's not very many people and it's like at a place where we can spread out. So I said, fine, fine. Yes, um, but otherwise, yeah, it's just uh, just small groups this week. Hopefully it'll be nice out of that trivia that we can sit outside, that probably won't happen. I just wore a mask at trivia last week. I had a um, like a beverage, like a seltzer and I just like went unmasked and just to drink the seltzer and then put the mask back on because I was like, I'm not getting COVID. It's not happening. Cause she's spreading. Miss Rona is spreading. So yeah, um, the hats, right? So I grabbed this. This is my bag of fun. This is my, it's hard to see because of the glare. This is just like random Shetland wall balls. Random colors of Shetland wall. And I like to reach in and like, almost like a, what do you call it, like a lucky dip. Like, you know, just like reach in and just like grab some colors. Like, okay, green, 
this is probably gonna like not work, but that would be fun. Wouldn't that be fun if I just like live picked my colors for the next hat? Okay, green, navy blue. All right, well, it's not a bad start. Purple, well, these are three beautiful colors, but I think I've already made a hat with these colors like this season. So let's um, put those aside and not do those. Gray, well, okay, that could be the background, I guess. <laughs> oh, orange, I've just used this one, but super recently. So we won't say no to that. What if we did like the burgundy and orange? That would be nice. Okay, what else? Oh, another burgundy. Okay, well, we don't need that. Gray again. Okay, maybe this is where it's telling me it needs to be a gray background. Purple, orange. This is a fun pop. I don't hate that, actually. Okay, okay, this is my pop. I need five colors total. So maybe the blue, honestly. Like, the blue would be okay. Like, the navy. I mean, yeah. In a lot of them, I'll do, like, the blue. I would do, like, this for the Peary. And then go into this like darker red and then have like an orange here or like another thing. And then this would be my pop. Yeah, I could, I could maybe do that. We'll see. Let's see what comes out next. White. Okay, we're not using that. Hmm. A darkish green, a grayish green. That's not gonna, maybe that would work with gray. I feel like that's not, that's like fun if you take away the bright red. I don't hate that. But if you use the bright red, well, I guess you could do like these three and then the red for the pop and then this for the peri on the outsides, maybe. We'll see. That's not horrible. Maybe I need to shake it up. Really dip my hand down in there. Okay, white again. Not helpful. <laughs> white again. Not helpful. A lot of the balls are white. Evidently. White. Wow. Can't win. Why is the hair in my mouth? <laughs> Sorry, this is not ladylike. Ah, no, nah. <laughs> no, <laughs> that's not gonna work. With that's too much. That's two pops. You can only have one pop. No, that doesn't work. That's the work. The bright red was better. I'm gonna just pull every single ball of hair out of this bag. More white can't hear me, so say stop pulling white. Oh, brown. Huh. Okay, wait. This is not bad. This is a Marie Wallen colorway, I think. I kind of like this. I'm not sure what order. But I like this combo. Maybe you can't see the orange. There we go. Brown. The orange, the burgundy, the blue, and the red. I think it's a winner. All right, well, now I've just chosen my next Shetland hat. I think that's gonna be really nice with a gray. It won't be these because that's not enough, but um, I do have a comb, so that'll be fine. Or maybe with oatmeal. Hang on, let's look at it with oatmeal first. Get that oatmeal out. Put these ones away. Yeah, I think it's gonna be with the oatmeal. This is a Shetland Supreme jumper weight color. Yeah, there's my colors. Okay, there's my six. Oh, that's gonna be so nice. Yeah. I don't know what order. I think it'll be the blue for the Peary's and then in order, um, in order in the, in the band or in the big motif, it'll be burgundy brown and then orange. And then the bright red next to the orange. Yeah, that'll be cool. Undo that. Sounds good. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna keep these here so that I don't forget about that. That's fun. I like that. Okay, another thing I'm gonna make when I'm home is hopefully the whole thing, but uh, I have two big skeins of this that a really nice viewer sent me. Her name is Pam, and she sent me some of her yarn. Um, which she said, I don't need this anymore. And I said, okay, I'll use it. Um, I love yarn. Thank you so much, Pam. And uh, this is the Dye Project Knitterly Wool Vibrant Color um, Handcrafted in Santa Cruz, California. 
This is Polworth DK, no, Squirrel DK, Sokol DK, I don't know why I call it Squirrel. 85% Polworth, 15% Silk, 725 yards, 250 grams. So she sent me two of these. So it's DK weight, excuse me, I have to sneeze. Ah, sorry for the sneeze. I think I like did this. I don't know how much I've been able to cut out of that. <laughs> but anyway, um, so I've wound a couple of them into cakes. I'm actually gonna make the visiting cardigan, which is a pattern that I made in Wensleydale Longwall Erin um, in May. And it is a cardigan and I'm making this for Jordan. Um, because I want to. <laughs> um, and this is Jordan's favorite color. So it's like ochre, grainy. It's, 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 this isn't green, but she loves, this is just like a gold ochre color, but she loves this color. So I'm uh, making this for her and I'm doing it, knit it all back and forth. The whole first piece just flat back, flat back and forth in that um, broken rib stitch. And then I'm gonna do, um, you know, separate the front, do the fronts and the back separately and then just graph them together and just knit the, um, knit the sleeves down from there um, in the round, I think. It's a drop shoulder cardigan slash v-neck sweater, but I'm going to do a cardigan for Jordan because she'll like that. Um, and I think it's going to be great. And I did actually just cast on 200 stitches. I was like, I'm just going to cast that on. And I did. And I have not started it, but I've cast it on. So when I'm ready to start, I will start. <laughs> um, and uh, and I've, yeah, I had to do it on my winder. Monica has a 10 ounce winder, but I don't have a 10 ounce winder. I have a four ounce winder. So I had to wind it into smaller cakes like three of the smaller cakes um but i'm really excited about this and if you've never seen the visiting card again you can f i'll link it in the show notes but it's um it's in line of 14 i think or 14, no 11 line of 11 i'm so sorry marjoram is the name of the magazine it's like a light purple it's like a lavender it's probably available on ravelry it's a pattern by stella Ackroyd, so i'll link that too but yeah, you can get that. So um, that pattern, it's a really just simple pattern. Um, I don't think I'm even using the pattern. I think I'm just knitting the, yeah, I'm just knitting. <laughs> it was so simple. There is a V-neck, but I, I've done so many sweaters that are V-necks. I understand V-neck shaping. I'm like, I don't really need a pattern for this anymore. It's really nice when you realize that. You're like, I don't need a pattern for like a whole lot of stuff. I don't use a pattern for Fair Isle sweaters anymore either. I just, I know what my magic numbers are and you just cast on a knit. Like that's the beauty of simple construction. And I like a complicated construction, but I like a simple construction too. So, you know, I don't know. I'm thinking about starting like after I finish this for Jordan and then, you know, once I'm back into sock knitting for next year, I'm thinking about casting on like a um, complicated cable sweater or something. I think that'd be really fun to do. Like, it would be really like a labor of love, you know, like a, like a, something that's going to take a while that I work on a tiny bit every day. By a tiny bit, I mean like an hour and it just like grows so slowly because it's cabled and it's an insane cable monstrosity. But, you know, it's one of those things where you put in a little bit of work every day and you see amazing results at the end. So that's how I used to work when I was an undergrad. I put in a little work. I was, I was always a worker like that. I would do a little bit at a time. And by the time I was a senior, I I had I changed a lot because I knew I'd done so much work that, you know, it was kind of amazing. And I loved that. It was, you know, and, you know, you have a growth mindset and lots of great things happen. So, yeah, we'll see. But I'm going to make Jordan this. And hopefully we'll finish it in time, like when I'm home or-ish, so that it can mostly be done for her when I get back because her birthday's in December, but um, it's three days before Christmas. <laughs> Poor Jordan. <laughs> but uh, yeah, but maybe it'll be done for New Year's. But she deserves a huge thank you for doing pattern layout for me. <laughs> so I'm going to give it to her on January 15th when we release my first pattern on Ravelry. <laughs> That'll be it. That'll be... Although that's Hannah's birthday, so that's just... It's too much. Maybe not January 15th then. Um, we'll see. Okay. So that's kind of that. This might actually be a shorter episode. I've been saying that lately and then they've all been like 50 minutes. But I've got stuff to do. I have to go 
I have to go to Bethesda to see Olivia Coleman's new movie called Empire of Light. And they're not showing it in any theaters in Baltimore. And I am so committed to Olivia Coleman that I will drive to Bethesda for this. And they're also showing it in Silver Spring, which is like four miles closer. But I was like, this is an inconvenient time. I want to go at 4.30 this afternoon. So I'm going all the way to Bethesda to watch this movie by myself. <laughs> I asked people if they wanted to come with me and everybody's busy. It's Sunday afternoon. They're all busy. And I'm like, I'm going to go. This is a movie is definitely getting nominated for Oscars. Like, I don't know why it's not showing in Baltimore because... That's nuts, but I do have spending to show. So I'm showing this. You're going to see this on the Wooly Thistle Shopcast as well if you watch that. Um, but Maggie's been talking about spending, so I've been talking about spending too. I decided. Um, oh, and then I've got that gold yarn. I'm also going to do the gold yarn. Clearly gold's my color this late December because I'm doing the gold um, merino and mohair and silver glitter Christmas to New Year's challenge. Knit. So... Yeah, it's gonna be a gold. It's gonna be a gold last week of December for me. And early January. So, spins right. I don't think I showed this one yet. So this, I have to show this with this outfit because it's so teal, look. It's so teal. So this is like a green and teal and lighter teal and murkier green spin that I did this week and I love it big fan maybe I was showing this no I had just finished the purple one last last time I recorded last Sunday that's right so this is this is new yeah this is um since then love this spin can't wait to I don't know what I'm gonna make with it maybe like a hat or some fingerless mitts or something but or both you could probably make both this is 100 grams and it's like almost 300 yards so probably get a lot out of that um and then I'm making three skeins for a friend of Jordan's for Christmas um who is a knitter and I'm hoping that she likes them uh I don't think she's ever knit with hand spun I don't even think she knows you can spin yarn necessarily but Jordan thought it would be a nice gift because she does like to knit and so I made this Jordan picked out all the colors I talked about this last weekend and Jordan picked out a bunch of colors from my just big old bag of different colored yarns and this is um, Rambouillet Pol and Polworth. And the Rambouillet was not combed very well. So this was the Rambouillet was harder to spin. Definitely hard to spin evenly. And there's a lot of little blips in it. But I mean, that's okay with me. It's just kind of textured. It's really um, soft and nice and squishy. You can get a nice yardage on it. And I did get a Rambouillet... Um, four ounce bump of dyed wool in my um nest fiber club this month so i but that one was probably combed so i'm really i will say i'll tell you once i've spun that i'll tell you what the difference that i see is in the you know less combed rambouillet versus the more combed rambouillet um so this was the first one it's two reds and a burgundy and there was supposed to be a peach but i forgot it in the bottom of the bag so it's not in there and then this was the next one I love this one. It kind of is similar to this, except hand spun. This is a medium teal, a lighter teal, and then a beautiful, like, light sage green. So this, the lightest color is Polworth, and then it's Romney, and I don't know what the darker teal is. Chivia, probably. So I think this is a blend of Chivia, Polworth, and, and Romney. And you can see lots of fun barber pulling effects all dependent on how much of each um, goes in. This is like a fractal spin, so it's just like broken in tons and tons of pieces and spun all randomly. I do go in an order so that there's not like too much like green at the beginning and too much blue at the end or whatever. Like I try to distribute the color evenly, but I don't put them in the same order for both bobbins and then you apply it together and it just looks kind of random and it looks like random fun chaos. So that's been fun. So the last one that we're making for Jordan's buddy, also named Emma, is greens. So this is just half of them. So it's not a very big skein. This is gonna be a, like a 45 gram skein. And it's um, this green, which I think is, it's like really thin, but I don't really know what it is. It got almost kind of felted. Yeah, I don't really know what this is. It's clearly not white. It was never white. I think this is a, 
the dyed fiber. I don't know what. Might have got a little felted in the pot. Maybe it's the Romney pencil roving. You can pull this apart like it does draft, um, but I have to do a bit of pre-drafting to, it's just a little compacted. It didn't really felt, it just compacted down a bit. It's clearly a long wool because it's pretty matted together. Let's find out how long it is. If you're not a spinner, this is a fun fact. To find out how long a, sta a wool staple is, you just pull. And that's how long the staple is. That's pretty long. It's like four, five, six inches. Yeah. A really good spinner would probably literally just be able to watch me do this and be like, it's that breed. But I don't know. So this is, yeah, that's that. This is, I think this is um, Romney roving. Yeah, super puffy. Could be Cheviot, but I think it's Romney. Cheviot's puffier. And then this is the Rambouillet um, as well. The, as you can see, look at that spring. Woo, that's a spring. So this is the last one. Um, the first bobbin's almost done. I started it this morning. We'll probably finish up that bobbin tomorrow and then start the second bobbin. And then we'll play that one. And we'll wash all these skeins together, including the purple one, which is still here. So I've got all these... Oh, so many fun colors. All these and then this green one will be in the bath having a nice soak so they can be, they can properly spring up and be what they want to be. So yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. This is definitely a shorter episode. So, but I got, I got, I got places to be and I didn't have a whole lot to show this week because I've just been spinning this yarn and I've been frantically trying to finish this. <laughs> <laughs> and also my grandpa's scarf and um, the Shetland cowl for my grandma. So, and it's been a busy week. I have a lot to do before I go home for a week because, or the next week before I go home because I'm going to be home for three weeks, which is a long time. Um, and as I probably said, you know, the longer, the older I get, the more like established of an adult that I get. And, you know, the more kind of of a life I have in Baltimore, um, you know, the harder it is to go home for this long. Um, so there's a lot of like, I don't want to say like loose ends to tie up, but you know, you got to see all your friends and et cetera, you know, before you, before you go and, you know, there's people you want to make sure you spend time with if you're not going to see them for three weeks. So I'm like, I'm not going to see Jordan all week because she's in Las Vegas. So we already, already kind of miss each other a lot. Um, she keeps texting that she misses me and I'm like, oh, I'm still here. <laughs> You're now gone. So, you know, but that's fine. Um, ah, I've got some chopsticks on the table. I was just eating my chicken for lunch. <laughs> um, but yeah, that seems like it's, yeah. We got lots of stuff going on. I just talked really fast and I did not tell you a whole lot about my life other than the fact that I went to church this morning. One week left. For me here, the kids finish finals in a week and a half, so two more days of class, study day, and then finals start on Thursday. And the bio finals on the first day, and the chem finals on the last day of finals. So the kids in bio have their final this, this Thursday, and the kids in chem, some of which are also the kids in bio, they take their final the very last day of finals. So yeah, I'm going to work a few days from home, maybe two days of the following, like 19th and 20th, I'll probably work from home. Um, I take the rest of the week off because I have like a lot of vacation time that I have to take, which is nice. Um, planning to take most of my vacations sort of in the summer, just generally. It's a good time and, you know, lots of other people can take vacations in the summer, which is also convenient um, that I would travel with. And so that's, that's good. So, yeah, but that's kind of, that's kind of what's been going on. Um. Tell me about what you're going to knit after you're done gift knitting. Or maybe you're already done gift knitting. With, tell me what you're advent knitting now in the comments. Tell me your favorite Christmas movie. I've been watching a lot of Christmas movies um, lately. So I watched Hannah and I watched Elf last weekend. I watched The Holiday. I love The Holiday. This week I'm going to watch Love Actually, um, my favorite Christmas movie. It's like one of my favorite movies ever. Love Actually is so good. Um, so that'll be fun. Yeah. What's your favorite Christmas movie? Tell me. Or holiday movie. It doesn't have to be Christmas. Oh, I watched... Hannah and I also watched Chevy Chase's Christmas Vacation on Friday night, which was one of my favorites. 
<laughs> National, it's called, if you're wondering, it's on HBO. It's called National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation, but it's with Chevy Chase. And my friends and I growing up always called it Chevy Chase's Christmas Vacation. So that's a very funny movie. Forgot how funny that was. Um, the movie's older than I am. Uh, but my spinning wheel is older than that movie. Because <laughs> it was, I think it's from 89. And my spinning wheel was made in 88. <laughs> and I was born in 1993. So, yeah, okay. So, I'm just going to keep rambling if I keep sitting here looking at the camera. So, I'm going to... I'm going to head to Bethesda to watch this Olivia Coleman movie. Um, so I'm very excited about that. If you have met me in real life, you probably are aware of my obsession with Olivia Coleman. If you haven't, now you know. Yeah. I really miss her in season five of The Crown. It's just not the same. And all the is just too cold. I know the queen was cold. She was a cold person. But I don't know. Olivia Coleman was just like perfect. So... Yeah, anyway, uh, you can like and subscribe. Uh, hit ring the bell if you want to get notified when I post a video. They always get posted on Tuesdays, unless something crazy happens, which has yet to happen. Sometimes I take a week off. It's kind of rare. Um, so maybe next week uh, I'll be coming to you from Vermont. Oh my gosh, yeah, maybe I'll get my mom to record with me or Hobbs. That'll be fun. Hobbs hates being on camera, but sometimes it's just really fun to torture him just a little bit. So... Yeah, maybe I'll wait till next Monday to record and I will um, I will feature him or something. That'd be fun. Okay, that's really it. I keep saying that and then not leaving. Thank you for watching. This has been Tiny Desk Knitting with Emma. Bye!